What exactly defines a bad day on the UCI Mountain Bike World Cup? Uh, a crash. Mechanical failure. Is it a flat tire, Claudio? I think so. Severity of self-disappointment. It's probably my worst race, maybe ever. You're about to witness them all. Let's, Let's begin. Are you taking with you any learnings or lessons from this year of coronavirus? I'm taking a lot of lessons from this year for sure. Um, do you want me to tell you what I take from this year? Okay. I had a big fire in me after Maribor from being so close to a win. I did not call the play, I can't And Loris Fergier does the double in Maribor! I knew I had to be better than that to beat him. I did not call the play, I can't dominate. Oh, good, hello. hello. You good? Ça va? Ça va? Alright. Fuck this fruit, that Cut them off, mate. Ça va, mate? Turning a low into a high, I think you just always have to look at the positive side of things rather than the negative. 24, cut at least one, there's a one. Dangerous, I almost cut my carotid. You have to learn to ride them better. Hey? You should learn to ride them better. Il y a toujours des points positifs, on arrive toujours à à trouver des solutions sur des sur, sur des choses sur lesquelles il pourrait buter. This route is dangerous, man. I'm swearing. Are you just really? But it's so hard. Like I've been racing for almost 10 years and I'm struggling. I crash a few times and I, everything is back to uh, I don't know how to turn, you know. Ça va? Ça me casse juste les. C'est pas grave. Je vais me faire la que le jour de la course. Hein. Ouais, il se pose énormément de questions, mais euh, ce qui serait dangereux, ce serait pas d'y mettre des réponses derrière. Je vais être là sur la course sur le, pour, pour le rassurer, sur des, choix, sur des choix de trajectoire par exemple. Je les filme et après je les mets l'un à côté de l'autre. Donc c'est bien, comme ça on va pouvoir comparer direct. That's the trickiest thing to do. When everything is a bit messy and not in anything you want, you just have to be really good at sitting, thinking about how to fix it. I tried to do two full runs and I crashed in both. So I feel like I cannot really get it together. My focus is a bit f***ed, so I need to get it, find it. Once you understood, you just accept it a bit more, you know, you're like, okay, okay, okay. That's my fault or someone else's fault. But then you understand and you know the origin. And then from there, you can just bounce back. So two down, two to go in this year's World Cup season. We are in Lusa, Portugal, a brand new venue for this World Cup, but one that the riders are absolutely loving. I was stoked. I felt like I had the potential to finish top five, be on the podium. Podium. Or peakless an approach with one potential unintended side effect. Doubt. Oh, no, that wasn't. Loses the front and and doubt down. kills more dreams than failure ever will. And now he's got the pole in the back wheel. Whoa, he was lucky to get away with that. Oh, what a shame for Finn Island. Yeah, it sucks. I hate not winning. It sucks. If you just joined us, it's a good time. It's the defending series champion from last year. I was feeling better than, than previously, but I could feel I was not so confident. So I was like, okay, build up a good race. It's only the first one. Louis Bruni on track.
Minus one notable exception, the average age of a current World Cup contender is 25.2 years old. But in dealing with the ups and inevitable downs, a racer with more laps around the sun is likely to possess something his younger competition may be lacking. Perspective, AKA old school cool. Can Greg Minard be his own record as the oldest man ever to win a World Cup? The best, the greatest World Cup racer of all time. 21 wins to his name. First World Cup race back in 1997 and still he's at the top. Minard smashes it. Nearly two seconds. That's incredible. Destroys the time of Louis Bruni. If I had to take one thing from Greg Minard, his haircut. I was actually talking to Greg post-race, and I was like, Greg, when the f are you gonna retire? There's something within him that allows him to be able to just be like, this is what I need to do, and this is how I'm gonna do it. And I think that just comes with experience of racing, and I'd love to take that and be able to apply it to myself now. One more man, left at the top, Greg Menard's teammate, Loris Vergier. Since 1991, science has documented exactly 942 ways to lose a UCI World Cup overall title. There's the climatic race crash causing catastrophic failure methodology. Well, the tire is gone. Oh my goodness. That's not how we wanted to see a World Cup title decided, is it? The win three World Cups, still lose the title, too little too late tactic. Yeah, here comes Aaron Gwynn then. He is your UCI World Cup overall winner. It's all green like in the corner. I was like, no way. <laughs> just, just go away. And now we're presented with number 943. Is he a flat tire, Claudio? I think so. Oh. The back-to-back -back victories until the rarest of mechanicals deflates your dreams approach to losing the pretty much assumed season overall title. I'm loving life like I should. Sonny, it's my lucky day. Thank you, science. Race one just broke my heart for Loris because ending last was terrible for the overall. It killed his mindset and it killed his confidence. But it's Greg Minard who's done it. The World Cup overall now wide, wide open. It was still in touch, but Everyone is in the mix, so there's like four or five guys able to win the overall. Everything is possible. Here's an unpopular opinion. Winning a World Cup is actually quite simple. Outrace your competition by outtraining them. Outtrain them by outresting them. But therein lies the rub. People confuse simple with easy. I think that's really true in cycling. Uh, there's no shortcut to the top. There's no way to skirt the hard work. Uh, and that's something that I love about this sport. Rest and recovery. I think that is some of the stuff that uh, happens behind the scenes that can really make or break a uh, performance when it's actually time to race your bike. Kate is pretty public about her recovery strategies and how much effort she puts into resting, whether it's massage or wearing Norman Tech boots, doing a lot of stretching and yoga, as well as mental activities that she uses to help rest her mind. I think that skill can really separate the front end of the field from the back on, on a race day. Okay. Kate Courtney, no wins yet. And you get a feeling before they go to the World Championships, Courtney's gonna want to win under a belt if she can get it. Courtney a little bit further back then with Yolanda Neff. 
Paul Eads setting the pace, but uh, I wonder how long for now. But have a look on the expressions on their faces with, with Pauline Van Pervoort, there's nothing. Courtney leads the chase in pack. Eva Lechner there on the number 11 bike. Pauline is not waiting for anybody. Kate Courtney's nearly 40 seconds back already. Now, that feels like a big gap. Nearly 50 seconds now, separating the top 10. Kate Courtney, 53 seconds no back now. Come on, Kate. Come on, Kate. Perfection so far from Prevo. Two world championships for this woman under her belt. From the start to the finish. Pauline for Prevo does it then. I kind of just ran out of gas today. I just didn't have anything left. I had a really tough race, probably my worst race maybe ever. If you take it all together, um, I think, you know, I've shown that I've worked really hard this year. I'm a little disappointed that I haven't really like been able to deliver on what I know I'm capable of, but I'm trying to just, you know, take it as it comes and uh, get a little bit better with every race and well, this time I did not get a little bit better, but uh, there's nowhere to go but up from there. <laughs>
The championship might be said and done, but this race is not over. Never rule out the greatest of all time. Greg Minaf, the winner of 22 World Cup races. Yeah, this is the feeling you get when you really live in all of the feelings here. Yeah, I'm no hero, I'm just a man. This is what I do, go out with the plan. Minaf, great! By 300! Remember the name, you will know who I am. I need my phone, I need it all. That is Greg Minaf, weaving through the last couple of turns I then. Minar's done what he can do. Rooney now left at the top. I was just, OK, you know what? It's the last race of the year. If I don't win anyways, I have no chance for the overall, so there's only one, ch one thing to do. Just go for it. Luik Rooney, the man you know that wants to settle the score before this season's over. This is his last chance. He's going to adjust something on his bike here. We saw it on Friday. On that fork leg, he reached out. He does it again. Jose goes green in the last split. Is Bruni going to win 2020 with a World Cup win? Who's going to get it? Is it going to be Bruni or is it going to be Minaf? Bruni takes the lead. Yes! Getting a win was a big mission. Gave everything I had. I didn't really manage my effort. I was just going as hard as I could. I just wanted to cross the finish line with the satisfaction of giving my best. That was my 2020 highest moment. It was amazing. Congratulations. You've made it long enough to see the end of a very strange mountain bike season. We've learned that fortune can be capricious and cruel. And we've taken some inspiration from riders giving all they've got. Even when what they've got wasn't enough. You know, this year has taught me in a lot of ways how resilient I am and how much I'm willing to do to continue to be able to train at the top level. I should have been more humble I think I kind of uh, got lost and then, you know, like it is bound to happen for everybody, you end up flat on your face. So you always have to come from low, I think, to, to reach a high. And the problem is once you're at the top, you, the only thing you can do is go back the other way. So there's a lot of work going into staying at the highest level. Everything's gonna fall into place. And people that have followed me over these few years and given me support will, um, eventually see me where I'm meant to be, and that's uh, first place. Sooner or later, there'll be fans back at the tape and racers back on course. But till then, like Lil Nas X, we're gonna ride till we can't ride no more. Now turn up the music in the headphones. You know I run the streets, in a fast life, you know what it's gonna be. I'm a menace to society, pride in my environment. I'm a menace to society, always keep it cheap, you know I run the streets. Wishes for 21 that Finals doesn't beat me. Finals is here and he's gonna beat you next year. I grew up on the corner as a youngin, straight from the block, I've been hustling. Whoa, it goes red, green. This is what all the TikTok people have in their room. Where's your nipple? Bro, you don't have nipples, huh? Yeah, don't do it though. Don't... Oh, you're biting me. You know I run the I'm a menace to society. Always keep it cheap. You know I run the streets. Live a fast life. You know.